Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, we're going to be taking the NIU KQI 300X up South Mountain here in Phoenix, Arizona. And this will be a test of the hill climb ability of this scooter. Now for today's ride, we do have the top speed capped at 20 miles an hour. And we've got regenerative braking set to weak. And our acceleration settings are right in the middle at standard. Now this KQI 300X does have 500 watts of nominal power, 1,000 watts of peak power, and it's got a motor capable of cranking out 37 newton meters of torque. So we'll definitely be putting that to the test today. Now on today's ride, there are going to be three lookout points that we're going to be looking to get to. We've got Dobbins Lookout, we've got Buena Vista Lookout, and Gila Valley Lookout, which is the newest one which opened up uh, near the top of the mountain. So we'll see if we can make it to all three. Now it's just about 7.30 a.m. here and uh, it's already above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's definitely gonna be a toasty one today. And so we wanna make our way up the mountain uh, as quickly as possible before it gets too hot. And one thing I'm gonna be watching out for today is overheating of this scooter. You know, this is definitely a grueling test. Uh, it'll end up being about nine and a half miles of incline. Uh, so we'll see how this scooter handles it that's part of the reason why we have the maximum speed capped at 20 miles an hour because we don't want to be going you know full output you know the whole way up the mountain and potentially risking unnecessary overheating situations so we'll see how it goes uh, if we find ourselves at any point you know struggling to get up this mountain we can always bump it into uh, sport mode uh, and uh, take advantage of the full torque of this scooter and we are officially at the two mile marker and uh, we've got five out of five bars remaining on the battery. Oh, it looks like we got somebody on a unicycle today. <laughs> That's awesome. Now there's definitely going to be some steeper sections here today going upwards of 9-10% grade. Uh, so we'll see how we do on those. Now so far we're doing what looks to be about 14 miles an hour. And uh, we're pretty locked into that speed wise. So uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see how this does as we get higher. And we are officially at 3 miles on this ride and we've got a little bit of a development here. We've got uh, 4 out of 5 bars remaining. So in yesterday's range test, uh, I was actually uh, able to go seven miles before I lost a bar. So that shows you, you know, what hill climbing does to your range. Eats into that battery much, much quicker. Now, of course, I've tested, uh, you know, a handful of scooters up here, um, especially the Ninebot Max G2 extensively and the Apollo Go. Now, with the Segway Ninebot Max G2, they actually released that scooter around June of last year, 2023. Uh, and I tested that quite a bit on this mountain. And before they did all of the firmware updates, uh, I was able to make it nonstop uh, to all three of the uh, previous lookout points. And the reason why I say previous lookout points is that the Gila Valley lookout wasn't fully opened. And so there was about a half mile or so, uh, three quarters of a mile uh, that was inaccessible. It was blocked off because it was under construction. They were building out the parking lots and everything up there. So anyways, uh, the 9-Bot Max G2 was able to make it uh, quite a ways up the mountain to the three of those lookout points. And then Segway did all of those uh, firmware updates, which uh, changed the performance a bit. And so we weren't able to make it to all three unassisted. Now on that ride, the last 150 feet or so required me to uh, do a lot of uh, pushing of that scooter. So. All right, so we were going into a steeper section here. Once we get around this curve, things do get quite a bit steeper. And you probably can't see it on the camera right now, but we are going into a pretty grueling stretch here. Uh, steep section, we'll go into the shadow of the canyon here. And uh, we'll see how we're doing. Right now we're doing about 11 miles an hour. And uh, we're just over four miles. So a little less than halfway up right now. The Apollo Go, on the other hand, was able to make it to two out of the three lookout points. 
Now, when I did take that up here, I was uh, a little more conservative uh, because that is a dual motor scooter with the same battery capacity as a 9 Bot Max G2. And so, you know, battery consumption is quite a bit higher on that scooter uh, than the Max G2. And so, anyways, we were able to make it to two out of the three lookout points, which is still a great accomplishment. There's a lot of scooters that can't make it up this. And so we'll see how this KQI 300X does today. Uh, we are cruising around at about 12 miles an hour right now. Uh, and so once we get over this, we'll have a little downhill stretch. We'll get the opportunity to you know, pump some more power back into this battery with that uh, regen brake. And here we've got a little bit of relief. So no, uh, no errors or overheating uh, issues, alerts, anything like that so far. So we are doing good. I may crank it into uh, sport mode, which is that 24 mile an hour unlocked. When we get to some steeper sections, a little bit uh, down the line here, to see if we can get, uh, you know, if we can tap into a little bit more of that torque. But so far, it's a very comfortable ride. You know, this is not the uh, softest asphalt in the world. Um, you know, it's it's a little rough. But uh, the front suspension on this scooter is doing an excellent job of absorbing that impact. So sometimes you might have that choice between a full suspension scooter and then a scooter that has suspension just in the front. And, uh, you know, I was a little skeptical of what this ride would look like, you know, having basically half a suspension. Uh, but so far, I'm, pl I'm pleasantly surprised. It is a really comfortable ride. Of course, you can feel the bumps in the back end of the scooter. But uh, these 10 and a half inch uh, pneumatic tires do a really good job of absorbing uh, some of those finer bumps in the road. All right, so this is a little steep section here. We are cruising around eight miles an hour. And we're about to make our turn into our first lookout, which is Dobbins Lookout. And we uh, currently are still at four out of five bars. So we're still making our way up. Okay, just, just for fun, right now we're at nine miles an hour, four out of five bars. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move us into sport mode and see what we can get out of that. So in sport mode, now all of a sudden we're 4, 13, 14 miles an hour, going into a steeper section, 17 miles an hour, 18 miles an hour. So sport mode definitely unlocks uh, more power for you here, uh, going up steeper incline so we're going 17 miles an hour right up this mountain so you know what that's that's significantly more power than what you're limited at at 20 so you know that four mile an hour restriction uh does uh you know hold the scooter back quite a bit nine miles an hour to over 17 that's a huge difference all right we are at our first lookout today uh, we've got all kinds of uh, fires all over Arizona, so uh, it is definitely hazy, so I don't think we're gonna get a good uh, view of much here, but I'll take a quick snapshot anyways. All right, so that was our look at. We are now working our way back down. I put us back into that uh, dynamic mode here. So top speed back to 20 miles an hour. And we're gonna take advantage of the uh, regenerative braking right now, because we are now at three out of four bars remaining on this scooter. And uh, we are just about at six miles on this ride. So six miles, three, uh, out of five bars. So quite a bit different than our range test on mostly flat ground, which got us to, uh, you know, four out of five bars at the seven mile mark. All right, now we're gonna head over to our next lookout. And today that is gonna be Buena Vista Lookout. So we'll go ahead and take advantage of this little downhill section here, build up some speed. And we are officially at seven miles. We've been cruising around now for 32 minutes. We've still got three out of five bars remaining. We are cruising around right now at about 16 miles an hour. 
and of course still in dynamic mode with uh, top speed set to 20 miles an hour. All right, so this is our second lookout. This is Buena Vista lookout. So we are now at two out of the three lookout points and we've still got three out of five bars remaining. All right, so looking at the app, it says we've got 50% uh, battery remaining and uh, 18 miles of range left. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, head on out to that third lookout point. Now, if we could make it to the top with at least two battery bars remaining, so let's say anywhere from you know, 30 to 40%, we should have enough power to make it down thanks to the regen braking. So you know, it's once we get into the single bar territory that I get a little bit worried that I'm gonna be doing uh, some walking of scooters down mountains. Uh, so hopefully that's not the case. Pump some power back into the battery here for a moment. And this is our turn. So this is the most grueling stretch of the ride up to Gila Valley Lookout. All right, so we are officially at eight miles on this ride. We've been riding for 37 minutes and uh, we've got three out of five bars remaining still. So this is a particularly steep section here. We are currently going eight miles an hour. Let's see if we've got enough uh, juice to make it up. Okay, speed's dropping. Six, five, four. We still got sport mode that we can hop in. We are at four miles an hour uh, with uh, speed capped at 20. So if we need it later on, we can always hop into sport mode. Uh, you know, if there's battery remaining, of course. All right, we got over that. So we've got a downhill stretch now. And we'll take full advantage of the regen brakes. And back into another uphill stretch. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, but those are our antennas there to the right. You can see those from all across the valley on a clear day. Uh, in my range test, when I was going over that pedestrian bridge and I was pointing to the mountains, of course, that was these mountains here and those antennas there, so. All right, so now we're gonna be going into what is the steepest section of this ride. So if we need to uh, hop into sport mode at any point in time, this may be the place to do it. We've got our lookout there up and to the left. But uh, this, is, uh, this is where the real test begins here to see if we can make it up this. So we are cruising around eight miles an hour right now. And we're about to go into the steeper section. All right, we're dropping down to six. Teetering between five and six miles an hour. Just got to get around this uh, steep little turn here. And uh, we had just crossed the nine mile mark. So we are half a mile away from the top. 41 minutes into this ride and we've got two out of five bars remaining. So uh, once we get to the top there, we'll hop into the app, see what that is percentage-wise. Okay, there we go. We, we got a code 13 on the scooter. So I'll go ahead and uh, pause for a moment and we'll see what that is. All right, so it says that code 13 is throttle hull error. Check if the throttle gets stuck and the wiring is loose. Please contact the dealer. Well, when I turn the scooter on, I don't have an error anymore. So anyways, that's interesting. I had never had an error like that, but uh, we'll see if we can make it up. One thing to note though is that when that error did happen, it immediately cut power to the scooter. So I thought maybe it was overheating, but it's definitely not. I'll take a look at what uh, code overheating is. So in case you were curious, the overheating code is code 11. So definitely not what we're running into today. And looking at the app, it says uh, we've got about 14 miles of range and we're at 39%. So anyways, We'll, uh, we'll hop back on. I don't have an air anymore, so we'll see what we can do here. 
you know, overheating, you can just, you know, stop and wait for things to cool down. Some of these other errors, I'm a little uh, concerned because I am quite a ways away from where we started. So anyways, uh, if you are curious, um, just up ahead here is where uh, we used to stop. This used to be the third lookout point um, where these uh, gates are up there but they've now opened up uh, this new area. So uh, it goes a little while further uh, into uh, a Gila Valley lookout. All right, we've got a little downhill section here. On our way up uh, to the final lookout point, we are almost there. So anyways, yeah, I, th I thought for sure that would have been like overheating or something, because you know we're definitely putting this scooter to the test. But uh, definitely not overheating. Throttle hull error. Let me know in the comments below if anybody else has experienced that. You know, maybe it was because, uh, you know, I was cranking down on this throttle too much. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not an error I've ever run into before, but uh, there's a first for everything. So, uh, you know, I'm just glad it wasn't something more serious like, uh, you know, burning up a controller or something. Because uh, I would definitely like to make it back down the mountain uh, on the scooter and not walking. So anyways, here we are, Gila Valley Lookout. All right, so we are now heading down the mountain. I went ahead and put us in sport mode so we can uh, speed up a little bit. And uh, this will give us ample opportunity to test out the brakes which of course this scooter's got dual disc brakes as well as regenerative braking which we'll be taking full advantage of on the way down the mountain today but uh, yeah this is the fun part hopefully we don't run into any errors on the way down the mountain so right now we are coasting so trying to put as much power back into that battery as possible And we've officially crossed the 10 mile mark. We've been uh, cruising around for about 56 minutes, which of course includes our little pit stops to take in the scenery. All right, here we go into another downhill stretch. Braking power on this scooter is definitely good, thanks to the uh, dual disc brakes. So disc brakes, of course, are gonna give you more stopping power than drum brakes. Okay, we just crossed the 11 mile mark, about an hour into the ride, and we've got two out of five bars remaining. And if you were curious, I did inflate the tires to 46 PSI before I left this morning. And uh, for weight reference, uh, 204 pounds with gear. Now, you know, going down this, I mean, this is one advantage that the Ninebot Max G2 has over this scooter is the full suspension. So when you hit some of these cracks in the road at higher speeds, uh, the Segway does a much better job at uh, dampening uh, those bumps. You know, this scooter has got excellent front hydraulic suspension, uh, which does a good job at, uh, you know, dampening any kind of bumps that might impact your ability to steer or control the scooter. But it doesn't have it in the rear, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. <laughs> oh, gosh. Just had some kind of bug biting the heck out of my face. That did not feel good at all. I don't know what that was. I'm gonna take a break here and 
All right, I had to take a little pit stop there because uh, whatever it was that bit my face uh, caused quite a bit of pain there. You know, I swiped it away. It felt like a good sized bug. Hopefully it wasn't a bee or something. Maybe some kind of flying ant, I don't know. That did not feel good. Definitely don't want to get bit in the face while riding a scooter at higher speeds down a mountain. That's definitely a recipe for disaster. All right, let's see, going into these turns. This KQI 300X handles them quite well. Now, when you're riding these scooters, you always want to make sure that you have your knees at least slightly bent, you know, and uh, definitely want to make sure that you're not standing with your feet together. I mean, that, that's a recipe for the disaster right there. I, sometimes I see people, you know, feet side by side standing on a scooter, cruising around. That's the worst way to ride a scooter because uh, it's much more difficult to shift your weight around when having to brake hard or accelerate heavy. And then, of course, coming into these turns, you know, that kind of a riding position is not ideal. Anyhow, we are two out of three bars remaining. I've gone ahead and kicked the scooter back into sport mode, of course. And so, uh, you know, we're still able to hit the 24 miles an hour with two out of five bars remaining. And we're, you know, well over 15 miles at this point. So uh, we're about a couple miles from where we started. One thing that I'm really happy about is I haven't experienced uh, any kind of ghost braking on this scooter, which is a scenario where, you know, you're, you're driving the scooter faster than its maximum speed, and the scooter tries to slow you down, but it does it abruptly. Uh, that is terrifying. Uh, I experienced that on the 9Bot Max G2 before they fixed all of it with uh, firmware updates. Anyways, back... Uh, Early on when they first released that scooter, if you weren't ready for it, that was enough to throw you off the scooter. Uh, you know, I caught that on video a couple times, not falling off a scooter, of course, but uh, the, uh, the, the ghost breaking behavior. So, anyways, that's no longer an issue. We've tested uh, pretty much every firmware update they've pushed out. I think I've made uh, 15 videos on the 9Bot Max G2, only because they had so many freaking uh, firmware updates. Every time they pushed one of those out, it was a different riding experience. Uh, with this KQI 300X, when you're in sport mode, it's basically fully unlocked. So your uh, uh, acceleration mode will be more like w the wild mode. And, uh, you know, you'll be able to go the full 24 miles an hour on this scooter. And that uh, acceleration in sport mode is definitely very jerky. Uh, you know, designed to, you know, get moving hot off the line. So be prepared for that. I find that once you, you dial it down to, to standard, uh, it's a much better riding experience and hey if you just want to chill relax take your time you can always jump into chill mode but anyways so as i've mentioned in previous videos this is not a sponsored video i did not receive this scooter from new in fact i purchased this with my own money uh, i got it about a week or so ago and uh so far i've been really happy with it but i will include links in the description those are affiliate links so if you decide hey you know what KQI 300X sounds like a great scooter, gets excellent range, it's able to climb mountains. You know, maybe that'll be a good commuter for me. Uh, if you use those links to purchase, it definitely helps support this channel uh, and keeps the wheels moving on future reviews, so thank you in advance. And uh, if you missed the uh, unboxing and first impressions, as well as the range test, uh, those will probably be linked at the end of the video, but I'll also include those links in the description. Uh, so if you want to check those out uh, see what this thing can do range wise see what that unboxing looks like uh, those videos will be available to you uh, i will be compiling all of these and all my experiences with this scooter uh, into a full end to end review once we're done with testing but uh before we do that i'm going to be racking up uh, several hundred miles to get a real understanding of what this scooter is uh, capable of and not capable of uh, and some of the good and the bad, the ugly, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll lay it all out there. So, But keep an eye out for that full end-to-end -end review. It's probably going to be at least a couple weeks, uh, two or three weeks until I get that out. But uh, anyways, so far this scooter has been 
an absolute uh, pleasure to ride. Um, very smooth operation, given that it has just a front suspension. Um, gets really good range, strong acceleration when you need it, and definitely lots of power. You know, we, we push this scooter into uh, speed mode, into a maximum speed mode, sport mode, up there on the mountain, right? And when we had the speed capped at 20, you know, it was, it was struggling, it was slowing down there. And then once we bumped it into sport mode, we just unleashed uh, all the power this scooter has, and we had no problem getting back up to 17 miles an hour. So definitely impressed with that. All right, so we are at the end of the ride. We'll take a look at some of our ride stats. All right, everyone. So that was our hill climb test with the NIU KQI 300X electric scooter. So we did make it to the top of South Mountain to all three lookout points. Uh, the total elapsed distance is 17.16 miles uh, with an average moving speed of 15.9 miles an hour. We did hit 25.5 miles an hour as a top speed. And then of course we went up 1,795 feet in elevation gain over the course of about an hour in 18 minutes so overall really impressed uh, with this ride we did run into that uh, one error on the way up the mountain that throttle hull error error 13 i thought at first it was overheating uh, but it was something else completely i'm not sure if that was me just being overly excited with that uh, throttle uh but that twist throttle but anyways uh, i just turned the scooter off turned it back on and it went away uh, and it didn't experience any more errors for the duration of the ride uh, the app does say that we have approximately 20 25% remaining in the battery, which is huge. I think on some of my other tests, you know, I had anywhere from uh, five to a little bit less than 10% with some of the other scooters that I've tested up here. Uh, so definitely really good battery performance on the scooter. Uh, also got uh, bit by some kind of flying insect uh, on the way down the mountain, uh, which was pretty awful. But uh, anyways, uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, happy to answer them. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.